Coming up on this episode of Tesla Tweets, we're going to be talking about the upcoming Investor Autonomy Day on April 22nd and how to tune in for that event. We're going to be talking about leasing, full self-driving, and we're also going to be talking about the state of Powerwall. Where's that? Stay tuned. Hey, what's up everyone? Jeff from Pure Tesla. If you're new to this segment, I go through Twitter and I find all of Elon's and Tesla's tweets, synthesize them into a five to eight minute show to keep you updated on what's going on with Tesla. So let's get started. As we talked about in the last episode, on April 22nd, there will be an investor autonomy day that will be all about full self-driving. Now what's gonna be unique here is that they do have a live stream set up and it's already active actually. So it seems like we're gonna be able to tune in for at least part of the event. We don't know much about what's on the agenda, but we do know that the Tesla network and full self-driving capabilities are probably number one on the list. If you want to tune in, they do have it set up on their YouTube page. If you need a quick link to get there so you don't have to hunt around for it, you can go to puretesla.com slash autonomy day. The link will be right here and it will take you directly to the YouTube stream. So you don't need to go on YouTube and find Tesla's page and find their stream. If you go to pure tesla.com slash autonomy day, you will be able to be taken directly to that stream. After that event, we'll certainly put out a video that talks about everything that we learned from the event and some of my takes on it. So definitely be on the lookout for that video coming up later this week. Elon also tweeted out a reminder that you are capable of leasing Teslas, and most particularly, the Model 3 as of late. Your vehicle, once approved, will be delivered to your home, and you have seven days to try out that car and return it for a full refund if it's just not the car for you. More often than not, can't imagine that being the case. Tesla owners online tweeted at Elon asking, is there any way to just have some speed maintain setting that is available for people that are in potentially winter climates where the snow builds up on the front of the car and thus takes out all autopilot functionality, even cruise control? Elon responded saying that putting water repellent on the radar, which is about a square right below the nose of the car, would be a great solution to that problem. You could pick that up at any hardware store, any kind of hydrophobic coating, and you could also have Tesla service do it for you as well. So two answers right there, hardware store or Tesla service, they'll be able to apply a hydrophobic coating for you to be able to better solve that snow buildup problem in the snowy climates. Another one of Elon's great tweets this week was about buying a car that has the ability to upgrade to full self-driving, stating specifically that buying a car in 2019 that can't upgrade to full self-driving is like buying a horse instead of a car in 1919. One of my favorite parts of this is a response from a Twitter user that says, well, horses do have pretty good autopilot. Elon responded stating, ha, true, I actually love horses. So it's kind of a funny back and forth, but a really interesting look into what that actually means, the ability to upgrade your vehicles in 2019 versus buying a horse that isn't capable of what now cars are doing in 1919, Pretty interesting retrospective in between the two, but um, I really like the direction of where that thinking is going. The age-old charging questions are still alive on Twitter with someone tweeting to Elon stating that they just purchased a standard plus version of the Model 3. They do a lot of driving during the day, 80 plus miles, with that and the desire to use sentry mode, dash cam, all the things that may take up a little bit of battery, they were wondering, is it okay to charge to 100%? I've been hearing that you're not supposed to. In most cases, they are completely correct. Elon responded to that tweet stating that it's really not a big deal. You can charge to 90 to 95% and you'll be fine. At 100%, his caution is more so that regenerative braking does not work at that point and therefore you will be less efficient driving your vehicle than you could be. Part of the speculation, especially with regards to the Standard Plus, is that it is a software locked battery pack, which means that there may be additional room for expansion and therefore charging to 100% doesn't necessarily mean that the battery pack is actually charged to 100% because of the potential software locking. So that is where you, you, know, you kind of get into those mixed components, whereas the dual motor long range version may have more of a detrimental impact on uh, future battery degradation when you're looking at charging to 100% because that is actually filling the full capacity of the battery. 
whereas that may not be the case with the standard plus version. A shout out to Sentry Mode from Teslarati that was posted when an owner had his car hit by the neighboring vehicle's door when they were opening it to get in. Turned out the person that actually hit that person's car was a civil traffic court judge that was actually running for local office video clear as day showed him opening his car door into the Model 3, checking it, and then ultimately getting his car and driving away without any note or whatsoever. <laughs> Elon responded to Teslarati's story by stating poetic justice and then went into what Sentry Mode is really providing for us, stating that Sentry Mode fundamentally empowers the individual car owner over entrenched interests, in this case a corrupt traffic judge. They also went on to further state that even Tesla doesn't have access to the video unless sent to us by the owner. Now that one was interesting to me because I always thought that it said that the video was uploaded to Tesla should somebody steal your USB drive. So I don't really understand the dichotomy there, but I do like the idea that, you know, there is a, a ten, additional potential component of privacy, and I just don't understand where that breakdown is between understanding how it's uploaded versus them saying they don't have access to it. I guess we'll have to wait for a little bit more information on that. Tesla tweeted out a really great video from their Kettleman City supercharging location, giving a nice 360 view of it from a drone, going on to say that their Kettleman City supercharging location has 40 stalls, 250 kilowatts of solar potential, and five power packs. They also have a pretty awesome coffee bar for you to be able to get a ludicrous latte, as they call it, while your car charges. In response to one of Elon's kind of crazy tweets, as there are plenty of them, E for Electric tweeted saying, Elon, is this really where you want to spend your energy? Calm down. I've been waiting for a power wall for two years. Maybe look into that. The response to, from Elon was, yeah, that tweet did take immense effort with a bunch of laughing. Love that sarcasm. Fair point though, power wall production is now ramping fast. Apparently the issue was that they were cell starved. They were using every possible battery that they could get into Tesla vehicles in order to keep production high there. Now that they're continuing to work out that demand issue, they are going to be ramping up power wall production. So if you've been waiting for a long time, as many people have a lot over two years, this should be ramping up and fulfilling much faster. We got a couple great videos that were posted by the Tesla account, one of them featuring the 2020 Roadster, saying that zero to 60 faster than you can read this caption. And man, that car is moving quick. Somebody of course responded stating, uh, must be a lot of slow readers around here because I read this and was waiting for the video to finish. Tesla very aptly responded saying that not even halfway into the video, the car had reached 60 miles an hour. So there you go. Another video highlighting that the Tesla Semi was out doing home deliveries of Tesla vehicles. I think that's super cool. I love the shot from up above, zooming down and showing you what is going on with the Tesla Semi and those home deliveries. So maybe you're being lucky enough to be having taken delivery of your new Tesla vehicle by the Tesla Semi. I think that's probably more of a West Coast thing, but I'd love to see that ramp up and scale out across the country. And to wrap up our Tesla tweet segment today, we're gonna take a look at one tweet in particular that I think is particularly interesting. The tweet is, Elon Musk had to borrow money to pay rent after he invested all $180 million he earned from PayPal on SpaceX, Tesla, and SolarCity. Somebody said, is that true, Elon Musk? Elon responded stating, yeah, gave everything I had to Tesla in December of 2008. So thank you to Elon for believing in this mission so greatly and producing such an incredible product. We truly appreciate it. That'll take us to the end of this episode of Tesla Tweets. If you have any comments, certainly leave them in the comments area below. If you have questions, certainly leave them there too. If you want to head over to the Twitter, always happy to talk to you there at Pure Tesla. If you have an email that you want to send my way, jeff at puretesla.com. I can't wait to share any future videos with you guys. We'll definitely be doing one on the outcome of the Investor's Autonomy Day. Uh, we got another couple great uh, feature highlight reviews. And as soon as you know new software updates come out, we'll be the first to be sharing those with you as well. Until next time, again, hit us up on any of the different contact channels. And until then, hope you have a great day. Take care, guys.